Another important point about the course in terms of how the course is going to go, of course, this is an online course. And uh, therefore, I think I'll establish the following weekly timeline for the course. Okay. Every Tuesday morning, I'll post the new materials for that week. Okay. So I'm going to take the course week by week. And every Tuesday morning, I'll post the course material for that week. And you work on it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And by Monday evening, end of day on Monday, all the assignments and work for that week are due. Okay, so you'll have almost an entire week to work on everything. Now, of course, when you say something is due on Monday, then typically people start working on it on Sunday night. Okay, in this course, if you do that, you're going to die. Okay, it's going to be really difficult for you to do all the work just on one evening. Reason is, as I have said in the syllabus, you can expect to do between six to nine hours of work every week on this course. Okay, unless you do that, you will not be able to grasp the subject matter and the course would not have been useful to you. After all, you're spending a lot of money and I want you to get the benefit from for all the money that you're spending. And I really want you to learn because at the end of it, you'll have useful skills. And if you start your work on Sunday evening, you will not be able to grasp the material by Monday morning. Okay. And another reason, of course, is that even though you work six to nine hours, if you spread it out over time, then the work that you did earlier will take a little bit of time to sink in. And time is a very important part of learning. You know, even, even though you may not be consciously working on something, you've read something on Wednesday, your mind has mulled over it for some time, then later on, when you look at it again on Thursday or Friday, something has happened in the meanwhile that makes it much easier for you to understand. Your mind needs time to mull over topics subconsciously and to learn. Okay, So therefore, I strongly suggest that you start looking at the course materials as soon as possible. Okay, Which doesn't mean that you have to listen to everything and so on. Just go there, take a look, see what is there, download a few things, Listen to the first five minutes of the lecture. Uh, I'll be posting video lectures, of course. So listen to the first five minutes of the lecture. See what's going on. Uh, if something is interesting, you may listen for a little more. Otherwise, okay, you've dipped your feet in the water. That's fine. Uh, download the assignments. See how many assignments are there, how many problems you're supposed to do, any background material that is there. Find out what reading you're supposed to do for that week and so on. So you can do a lot of preparatory work in 10 to 15 minutes. And if you do that, early, then you have a good idea of what needs to be done. And slowly, you can get into the work. So try to work on a gradual time schedule spread out throughout the week. And that is because that is what will give us time to interact on the discussion board on Google Groups. Okay. And if you start everything on Sunday, then you're in a great panic. You're asking me questions on Sunday night. And of course, I'm not going to answer them uh, uh, that late. Right? And then, of course, you will not be able to understand the topic. You will fall behind and so on. Okay, So any questions and so on, the discussions, any clarifications, all that should happen over the week. So I strongly encourage you to start work on uh, every week early and spread the work out over the week. Even if you've got 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour, whatever little time you have, you can put it into this. Another thing also you could do is you could, uh, for example, uh, you could probably download the video or let's say you're driving, you've got a smartphone. So from the smartphone, you could be just streaming the lecture and listening to the lecture as you're driving. You don't have to look at the screen. In fact, please don't when you're driving, but at least something is going on. You're listening to the words, something is sinking in. That is useful. And you could do that. OK, so again, I strongly recommend this because some of these topics will be new. Uh, many of these topics obviously will be very new to you and it might take time for everything to sink in. And therefore, I would say that you should get an early start during the week and do everything uh, over an extended time period. OK, so that said, let's take a look at some definitions of data mining. So Tan, Steinbeck and Kumar 
in one book they have defined data mining as the process of automatically discovering useful information in large data repositories okay so again the operational thing is useful information large data rep repositories Shmuley Patel and Bruce they give a definition that says statistics at scale and speed and simplicity uh, not a very explicit kind of a definition somewhat abstract but I think what they're trying to do in this is to make a distinction between classical statistical analysis and data mining okay they're trying to say this is statistics at scale and speed you know whereas classical statistical analysis is usually uh, performed under conditions of a lack of data in classical statistical analysis most of the time what you're trying to do is to draw useful inferences from small amounts of data okay using complicated techniques whereas in data mining data is usually not the problem lots and lots of data is available and therefore the whole emphasis shifts and says okay now that we have all of this data how do we draw useful conclusions from this data and because there's a large amount of data how do we do it quickly and how do we do it using simple techniques okay so that's the difference in focus that they're trying to bring out and our book the course text defines business intelligence as a business process for exploring large amounts of data to discover meaningful patterns and rules this is sort of like the first definition large amounts of data and instead of saying useful information they're being a little more specific saying meaningful patterns and rules okay so in some sense all of these definitions are really saying the same thing what we are trying to do is to say well we've got large amounts of data let's delve in and find actionable intelligence from that the Gartner groups defines business intelligence as the process of discovering meaningful correlations patterns and trends by sifting through large amounts of data stored in repositories using pattern recognition technologies as well as statistical and mathematical techniques okay once again the definition is really saying the same thing but being a little more uh, expansive about the various components of the definition large amounts of data yes meaningful correlations pattern recognition technology statistical mathematical techniques etc okay so that gives you a good idea of what is business intelligence and what is specifically data mining the part of business intelligence that we are dealing with some business examples now normally earlier let's say 15 20 years ago when a company wanted to send out promotional flyers right what they would really do is to simply send out the flyer to thousands of people okay they would they would not have any means of knowing who should I send this flyer out to obviously they should be trying to send the flyers out to people who are most likely to respond to customers who are most likely to respond but they did not have the tools and techniques to identify that who are most likely to respond they didn't know that right after all let's say you have money to spend uh, to send 10,000 brochures that's it your budget allows you to spend uh, send out only 10,000 brochures now you could randomly send these 10,000 brochures out to a bunch of people or if you have a list let's say of 100,000 people you identify the 10,000 of this 100,000 who are most likely to actually respond to it and send your 10,000 out to them obviously your rate of success is going to be much better if you send it to people who are more more likely to respond okay with data mining we would be studying techniques by which we could do this say so given a list of 100,000 people identify those 10,000 who are most likely to respond to our offer of course you're going to do that based on historical information uh, another idea is let's say you're looking at uh, this is from a tax perspective let's say uh, the IRS is examining millions and millions of tax returns that are filed by people now out of these how do they identify the ones that are most likely to be fraudulent because they could perform a more detailed analysis of only a certain subset of the millions uh, the millions of tax returns that are filed 
right? One thing they could do is randomly look at tax returns to find out which are fraudulent. But it would be better for them if they have tools and techniques to identify the ones which are most likely to be fraudulent and then perform a detailed audit on those. Okay. Similarly, when uh, a bank is looking at people who have applied for loans, they could give loans to people who are less likely to default. Right. So again, they could find out based on the profile of applications, who are the ones among these who are most likely to default and then not give loans to those people. Okay. Similarly, uh, it is possible for a company based on products that a particular customer buys and other customers are buying to try and identify which are the products that this particular customer is most likely to buy. Okay. And then they could incentivize the customer by giving coupons or discounts or other things. Okay, so these are all some techniques, uh, some examples of situations where data mining could be profitably used. Origins of data mining. Uh, data mining has originated uh, initially from statistics, classical statistical techniques, but subsequently uh, computer science and artificial intelligence have also contributed a lot of techniques to data mining, right? So it's a combination of statistical techniques and uh, techniques from the computer science discipline. Okay, there's a subtle difference in emphasis between classical statistics and data mining, which I have already referred to, which is that classical statistics it was built because it's it's an old discipline. Uh, classical statistics was built around uh, trying to extract meaningful uh, inferences from small amounts of data. And how do you give, even though you have small amounts of data, how can you extract inferences which you can be quite confident about? That was the challenge of classical statistics and a lot of techniques developed around that. Whereas in the modern world, there is no paucity of data. There are tremendous amounts of data. Now, once you have that, then you can do a lot of other things which are uh, different from classical statistical techniques. Right? So those techniques are also employed. Of course, it's not as if classical statistics is useless. Classical statistical techniques are also employed in data mining okay but there's a subtle difference in emphasis okay now why has data mining become important now why is it such a rage at this point in time well that is because the decreasing cost and increasing availability of automated data processing which is that businesses are using computers to perform all their business activities like selling and buying and everything and therefore automatically as a byproduct of conducting business, huge amounts of data are becoming available. So that's important. And of course, there are more events that are taking place, especially with web-based businesses, because when you're talking about web-based things, it's not only uh, information, useful information that is gathered when somebody decides to buy something. If you look at an Amazon.com, for example, the simple fact that I browsed to a particular book or a particular product. That is useful information. I may not end up buying it, but it shows something that I have an interest in that area. Okay. So, and also the fact that when I'm shown a list of items, I click on a particular item. Well, that is useful information as well. That is also a useful event, right? So with web-based uh, businesses, with e-commerce, companies are now identifying more and more useful events. And there's information about those events, which is also being captured. Okay, so there's lots and lots of data that is available. And of course, uh, because of the use of the internet, barcodes, point of sale systems, a GPS and so on, there are so many different streams of data that are coming in. So with all of this, there's a tremendous growth in the volume of available, available data. And therefore, you can do a lot more now. And all of that explains the the growing interest in the field of data mining today. For example, in 2003, Walmart captured 20 million transactions per day. And data mining is different from data retrieval, right? Retrieval is when you're just retrieving some information, either direct information or computed information, right? So the following, the, the examples shown on the screen would be examples of data retrieval. Calculate the average salary of residents in a certain neighborhood. 
or use a search and search engine to find the coordinates of a long lost friend that is not data mining okay that is just data retrieval you know just because you're retrieving some useful information from a vast amount of stored information that doesn't mean it's data mining in data mining you're trying to look for patterns so for example certain items seem to be more popular at certain times in certain parts of the country okay so there what you're doing is you're looking at all the sales information and you're f trying to identify some underlying patterns okay so the word pattern is very important it's not just a matter of retrieval but of individual pieces of information it's more about identifying underlying patterns because with patterns you can apply the pattern to make useful decisions uh, to make many useful decisions okay or set of customers for company x can be classified into five different categories okay so you've got lots of customers you've got 10000 customers but broadly speaking there are only five different groups so it's useful for you to identify these five groups and therefore whenever you find a new customer who follows falls in one of these groups then whatever properties you have identified for the group now apply to this new customer right so it's actionable information information or a pattern which you can apply to make lots of future decisions as opposed to just information retrieval which is valid for that particular piece of information alone okay so data mining is different from data retrieval okay can you think of anything that you did recently which resulted in data that possibly along with similar data from other people could be mined for valuable insight okay anything that you did recently okay let's say today from this morning is there anything that you did which resulted in data stored somewhere that could be mined for valuable insight okay i would suggest that you take a couple of minutes pause the video here write down something and then continue with the video now in the following slides i've given some examples of things that i did which could potentially be used for data mining for valuable insight for example this morning i used blackboard for doing various things now it's possible that the company that is hosting blackboard for seton hall can use information about how many users logged into blackboard at certain points in time during the day so at the time i used blackboard there were obviously other people using blackboard as well right they could use this information of how many people were using blackboard at various points in time and they could then determine how many servers to keep online at different points in time okay so they could use that as a way to balance their resources through the day they don't they the ma at maximum peak they may require let's say 100 servers but that peak may occur only at certain points during the day and most of the time you may not need even 25 servers okay but they will know this only when they look at usage patterns so my using blackboard my logging on to blackboard at some point in time is one piece of data which combined with everybody else who used blackboard at that point can give useful intelligence to this company another point might be they can correlate demographic information about me for example if they have it you know my age my uh, educational background which part of the country i am accessing blackboard from and then they could correlate that to the features of blackboard that i am using right for example let's say i used uh, discussion boards okay whereas some other people may not have used the discussion board feature or some other feature and they could then see what kind of people are using what kinds of features okay and then they could use that information to make the user experience much better for 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 everybody else another example if you look at a grocery store okay uh, you could print coupons at checkout based on the items that a particular person purchased right so for example i bought item x and the grocery store has seen that many times when people buy item x they also tend to buy item y so in that case, they could increase the probability of me making another purchase by giving me a coupon for item Y, right? So that uh, it's likely I'm going to buy it because most people who buy X seem to buy Y. I haven't bought it on this occasion, but by giving me a coupon, they're trying to attract me to buy that item maybe right then or 
a little bit later. Right? Or also when they find that certain items are bought together, people who buy X are all the time buying Y. So within the store, they could put items X and Y close together so that you pick up X, you also have a tendency to pick up Y at that point. Okay, so again, that information uh, is useful. Or they could send promotions to people based on uh, demographics. They could analyze, I, I went and bought something. So they've got my demographic information through my loyalty card. I have a ShopRite card. So they know that I have certain demographics. This is the kind of purchases that I've been making. So based on that, they could send out promotions to people with certain demographics for certain kinds of products. Okay, now in, uh, in data mining, we generally talk about two different types of techniques. Predictive techniques, descriptive techniques. Okay, predictive techniques are techniques where you're trying to predict something. For example, what will be the price of oil uh, two days down the road? Okay, so that's a predictive technique. Or alternately, is this person likely to accept my offer for a particular product, right? Or if I mail out a credit card offer to somebody, what is the probability that person will accept it? Okay, is that person one who's going to accept the offer or reject the offer? So that's, those are kinds of predictive techniques. And within predictive techniques, you have two different types. One is when you're predicting numerical values, like the price of a product, or the price of a house, or uh, temperature tomorrow, right? You're predicting a number which can, of course, take on a continuous value, okay? So that is prediction. And the other type of prediction is what they refer to as classification, right? You want to classify somebody as either a person who will accept the offer or one who will reject the offer, okay? Or classify a, a tax return as either fraudulent or not fraudulent. Or classify uh, somebody as a person who's likely to default or not default. Okay, those are all classifications. Of course, all the examples of classification I've given have had two categories, but it could be more. Okay, now generally, uh, although I put both of them under predictive techniques, uh, the, within data mining, they reserve the term predictive techniques for predicting numbers, and for other things, they just refer to them as classification. Although both are sort of predictions, but the word prediction is usually employed for predicting a number. And the rest, when you classify something, it's just referred to as classification. And then, of course, there are lots of descriptive techniques in data mining, where you're not trying to predict something, but you're just trying to get a feel for what this data is all about. Okay, so those are descriptive techniques, somewhat subjective. And among the descriptive techniques, you have things like data visualization. Visualization is becoming increasingly important with data because nowadays you have huge amounts of data that is available, right? And if you just take a look at the data on a spreadsheet or on a printout, you really don't get a feel for what this data is actually talking about because the volume of data is so high, just by looking at it, you can't really understand much. So you need visualization techniques, that is techniques for plotting the data into various kinds of charts that make it possible for us to see patterns, just visually. So that is visualization technique. And then there are other techniques like association analysis, clustering, anomaly deduction, etc. all of which we will talk about as we go through the course. Okay, uh, 